What's up guys, welcome back. So I kind of feel like I say that I have dry skin in absolutely every single one of my videos. And that's obviously because, I mean, similar to oily skin, there are some products that work amazingly well for dry skin and some products that just don't. And so when I find a product that does, I like to let you guys know that it has the dry skin stamp of approval on it. So I feel like that's why I talk about it so much. So I figured why not just make a video all about some of my favorite dry skin base products. So that's what I did. I rounded up all of my favorite primers, foundations, concealers, and powders, and I'm gonna be talking about all of them today. These are all of like my top, top favorite, the best of the best, the products that will always make my skin look good no matter what dry skin stage it's at because sometimes my skin can be really crusty, really flaky, and really difficult to work with because texture is definitely very difficult to hide, but I've found products that just work with me instead of against me. Okay, I have a lot to talk about, so let's get right into it. Okay, so we're gonna start off first with primers. I have four. I really want to make sure also that I chose different primers for different concerns or wants and needs. Starting off first with the smoothing primer. Now, smoothing primer for dry skin can be especially tricky. I find it very, very difficult to find a good smoothing primer that actually does the trick in smoothing out my skin and that also doesn't accentuate the dry patches on my face and doesn't pill because I find most smoothing primers pill like crazy on my skin. There are only a gentle handful of smoothing primers that I find actually do the trick and the Tatcha the Liquid Silk canvas is probably one of my all-time favorites. So this is a smoothing primer that applies much more like a cream and it doesn't really have like a silicone texture to it and I feel like that's really the key because those silicone based primers for my skin type just really don't work. They don't mesh well together. So because this is more so a cream formula, it just blends and melts into the skin like a moisturizer would and it leaves like the softest, most silky finish on the skin that makes your face look like a Facetune filter, you guys. Like it is so blurring and smoothing. Somehow this product just makes your skin look and feel so so silky smooth. So it's wonderful if you are looking for a smoothing primer. This is absolutely dry skin friendly. No pilling happens with this guy. So now moving on to my favorite gripping primer. So this is a primer that's going to actually grab onto the foundation and have it last a lot longer. Similar to smoothing primers, I find that gripping primers are also kind of difficult to, to wear for a drier skin type. Again, I kind of feel like they actually dry out my skin or they make my dry patches look so much worse. The only gripping primer that I found works for my skin is the Milk Makeup Hydro Grip Primer. The primer works because it's actually quite hydrating, so it's not gonna make your skin feel super tight. When you apply this to the skin, it kind of feels like a thick gel moisturizer that stays tacky, so it's really gonna adhere to the foundation that you put on top, which in turn is just gonna make your foundation last a lot longer. And I do find that this actually makes quite a big difference in the longevity of my foundation. This is actually the primer that I'm wearing on my skin right now. I mean. You can't really tell because it is just a primer. You can see that there's no patchiness going on, which can also sometimes be an issue with those gripping primers. Like the foundation can apply a little bit unevenly. It is not the case with this guy. So it's really, really good. And I do know that this is quite a popular product. I remember when I had asked you guys what some of your favorite primers were for 2019, a lot of you guys said the Milk Hydro Grip. So clearly this works for a lot of different skin types and a lot of different people and it works for me as well, so I love it. So my favorite type of primer variation is definitely the glowy primer. A glowy primer does just that. It makes your skin look glowy. And what's really nice about glowy primers is that they are quite versatile. You can use them, I would say, in like three different ways. You can either put them all over your face on their own to give you an all over glow. You can also put them on just the high points of your face if you want a more specific glow. And then you could also mix a little bit into your foundation, which is really great, especially when you wanna take a more matte and full coverage foundation and kind of just add a little bit of glow and life to it. So I have two favorites here. One is quite new in my collection. The other one I've had for a very, very long time. So I'm gonna start off first with the Glossier Future Dew. This is essentially pure, glowy skin in a bottle. It does not have any shimmer. There's no tint to it. It's just pure, glossy glow. So the texture of this product is quite interesting. It's kind of described as an oil serum hybrid. So when you apply it to your skin, it does feel like a thicker, oil. So once it's completely rubbed in, that's what it looks like. It just gives your skin 
this amazing reflection. And not only does this product give you this glow, but it actually does moisturize your skin at the same time. So you just feel really nourished and glowy. So for this particular product, because it is so intense and glossy, I don't really love to apply it all over my face. I normally will just apply it right on like the tops of my cheekbones, maybe across the bridge of my nose if I'm feeling a little bit wild and crazy. And I feel like that is perfect. Otherwise, when I do put it all over my face, it can get a little bit too intense and a little bit too glowy because yes, there is such thing as sometimes too much glow. Um, it can get borderline just oily looking. So I would be kind of careful with this product, but it is definitely very effective and it does give you that gorgeous glass skin like appearance so that is fantastic for just like a simple pure glowy product but if you want something that has a little bit more of like a sheen and a tint to it then the l'oreal true match lumi glotion is a beautiful product now there are so many products on the market that are super super similar to this product so that's why i did decide to go with a drugstore version because even like the higher end versions of these more glowy tinted primers, they all just look the same. So I just don't find that it's necessary to go higher end because this guy works perfectly. So this product does come in a couple different shades, obviously depending on your skin tone. I really like the shade 902. Um, this does have more of like a champagne undertone to it, which is very pretty. And I really, really love to especially mix this in with my foundations. And that's what I did today. So you can see my skin looks nice and glowy, but it doesn't look super like reflective or metallic, which is always something that I like to watch out for because sometimes these more glowy primers will just make your skin look metallic, which is not what I want. I also really like that this product doesn't have any intense shimmer or sparkle to it. It's purely just a reflective sheen. And you can also just use this as a highlighter if you'd want. So you can take a little bit off the back of your hand and just kind of pop it on the tops of your cheekbones and you'll get a beautiful natural looking but still pretty reflective highlighter. Okay, so now moving on to foundations, I have eight. So there's quite a few to talk about. Now I will say that my favorite dry skin friendly foundations are constantly changing because obviously I am you know, continuously trying new products. So my rotation does shift and change as the months go by, especially in different seasons. I do like different types of products, um, but there are a couple that have stayed tried and true for a very long time, which I'll point out when I when I bring those up, but I'm sure you guys will recognize them anyway. And then there are others that are newer in my life that I've just found really work so, so well for my skin. So let's jump into them. So starting off first, my tinted moisturizers. These are pretty much my everyday foundation. So I have my Laura Mercier tinted moisturizer, my Nude Sticks tinted cover, and the YSL Touche Clat All-in-One Glow. So I'm just gonna breeze through these fairly quickly. So the Laura Mercier tinted moisturizer is a long time favorite of mine. So I would definitely say this is probably one of my most used, if not my most used foundation product. So that definitely says something. So even though this isn't tinted moisturizer, I do feel like this has some really, really good coverage to it. I always Always find that I'm able to get probably up to like a medium coverage with this product but what I love so much about this and what makes it just so great is I find that it always looks so natural looking on the skin because it is that tinted moisturizer formula it's very very lightweight so it kind of just blends into the skin it does what it needs to do and it doesn't look like it's really there the finish of this is also very skin like which i love so just overall this is probably like my ultimate favorite for dry skin the ysl touche clat all-in-one glow is actually very similar to the laura mercier i do feel like they are very interchangeable the only difference between the two is that the all-in-one glow does have a bit more of that glowier finish so i typically go for this one when i am feeling a bit more of that glow but these two are like equally good so the new six tinted cover is definitely a very 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 light coverage foundation this is what i like to wear on my no makeup makeup days i find it does a really good job of just evening up my skin tone it really doesn't have a ton of coverage to it you are still going to see a lot of your natural texture through and i do find that whenever i'm having a really dry day and i have apply this, um, my skin just looks a little bit more like alive and fresh. It gives it a little bit more of a glow. So I do really like this for, again, my no makeup makeup days. Okay, so now let's dive into my medium to full coverage foundations. All of these I feel like are very interchangeable with one another and I don't really wanna keep repeating myself throughout each product. Um, so I'll just say a few words about them. But honestly, I feel like the reason why I like each one of these is because they all kind of do the same thing. So let's just quickly go through them. First things first, I have my Shiseido Synchro Skin Self-Refreshing Foundation. This is a product that kind of blows my mind because it has such amazing coverage to it, but yet it still looks so 
fresh. This product will truly just make your skin look flawless, but it won't give you that heaviness that a lot of full coverage and medium coverage foundations can sometimes give you, especially when you do have a drier skin type, you know that medium and full coverage foundations can kind of be a little bit tricky because if they're too heavy, they're really gonna accentuate the dryness on your face and it's just going to make your skin look really, really heavy. Um, and so I do make sure that all of my full coverage foundations do have this certain level of like hydration and freshness to them because it really helps in combating that texture that I have on my face. Very, very similar to the Synchro Skin is the Makeup Forever Reboot Foundation. This is what I'm wearing on my face right now. This is actually very comparable to the Synchro Skin. I feel like it gives me a similar effect, but the Reboot Foundation is slightly more hydrating. The Reboot Foundation also wears really, really well. Um, I find it looks just as good as when I first apply it to right to the end of the day. Okay, so next up we have the Milani Screen Queen Natural Finish Foundation. I know I'm repeating myself, but this is also very, very similar to the Shiseido and the Makeup Forever Reboot Foundation. I have actually been really, really enjoying mixing my Milani Screen Queen with a little bit of my Makeup Forever Reboot. I find that they mix really, really well together. And I don't really know why I do that. I just feel like it does add a little bit more coverage to the mixture, but because they are so similar in formula, um, the, I, I still get that really nice natural finish. So this is a very, very, very good drugstore alternative to both of these products. I feel like it does just give such a gorgeous natural look to the skin, but it still perfects everything, still evens everything out, but it's not heavy at all. And I still find that it is quite hydrating, gives your skin a really nice skin-like glow. That's not too over the top either. So this is really just so fantastic. I can't get over it. These two guys are two of my favorite, more full coverage foundations. So the other three were medium. This is definitely more full. So the Laura Mercier Flawless Lumiere Radiance Perfecting Foundation has been the foundation that I've been wearing to like events. When going out and events were a thing, this was always the foundation that I would go to. It was full coverage. It made my skin look completely perfect and flawless, but it still gave my skin a lot of life. This foundation does have a beautiful glow to it. That's again, not over the top. It's that perfect kind of like satin finish. I also find that this product photographs really, really well, which is why I would often favor it for going out or for events where I would be photographed. So the last foundation that I want to talk about is quite new in my life. I've only had this for a little bit over a month. This is the Oma Say What Weightless Soft Matte Hydrating Foundation. Oh, guys, this foundation is so good. So it does say in the name that this is a soft matte but hydrating foundation. When I read that, I was very intrigued because most matte foundations just don't work for my skin, but because this did say that it was hydrating, my hopes were high. So this product does give you a soft matte satin finish. What that means is that it's not going to be a matte that's gonna completely flatten, flatten out your skin or dry you out. Um, it, it's just something that's a little bit softer than a hydrating or glowy foundation and more hydrating than a typical matte. So again, it's that perfect in between. So the texture of this product is very, very, very thin in texture. It's not quite serum-like, but it definitely doesn't feel like a thick foundation at all. And, and that's what I really like about this. And I feel like that's why it works so well, because even though it's that really thin texture, it still has great coverage to it. So you do not need a lot of product at all. A very, very little amount is gonna go quite a long way and you're gonna be able to cover your entire face. With dry skin especially, the smaller amount of product that you use, the better. Because especially if you have any type of texture on your face, the more foundation you pile on, the more likely it's going to attach to that texture and accentuate it. So you do wanna apply nice thin layers of your base makeup and kind of just build it up where you feel like you need it. And for me at least, that's always where I find I get the best looking results. And because this is more of like a soft matte finish, I actually really love to mix my Lumi Glotion in here or any any other like glowy primer because it just kind of gives it that little bit of extra boost of a glow chef's kiss so gorgeous for a full coverage foundation for dry skin it's fantastic so that is it for foundation so now let's move on to concealers i really wanted to focus on formulas that were especially hydrating for really dry under eyes because trust me i know how frustrating it is to apply a concealer that's not suited for drier under eyes Oh, it just gets really messy really quickly. Starting off first with the Kosas Concealer. So this is probably the most hydrating concealer that I have. Um, this is actually marketed as an eye cream and concealer hybrid. So you can imagine that it is very, very hydrating for underneath the eyes. I do really like this more for every day. This is not really a product that I would wear to like an event or on a night out because I don't really 
find that this has a ton of coverage. It lands somewhere between like a light and a medium coverage. It's not super light, but it's definitely not like super medium either. It's right in the center, but it's definitely enough for a great everyday finish because it actually adds like a hydrated sheen underneath the eyes, which I think is again, very, very flattering. And so if you have very, very dry under eyes, this is the one that I would recommend the most. Next up, we have probably one of my all time favorite, like top three concealers. This is the Josie Moran Vibrancy Argan Oil Full Coverage Concealer Fluid. So this is a hydrating concealer that is more on the medium to full coverage side. This is not super light coverage. So this is actually something that I really do like to wear when I am wearing my more medium to full coverage foundations, or if I am wearing my tinted moisturizers, I feel like I'm able to use this concealer in both instances, which is really nice. And it's not gonna look weird or crazy. Now this doesn't give you the same like hydrated sheen that the Kosas concealer gives, but it instead just works well if you do have a dry under eye like it doesn't attach to any dry patches it kind of just smooths everything over it doesn't crease it doesn't settle it doesn't look heavy it's just like a perfect concealer in my opinion <laughs> a very similar formula i find to the Josemar Moran vibrancy concealer is the elia true skin serum concealer this is just another really nice hydrating medium to full coverage product. I feel like this again works really well if I wear more of a full coverage foundation or a light coverage foundation. It is quite versatile and it just always looks good underneath my eyes and it never looks heavy. So that's all I really got to say about that. Okay, so if you want something that is still very, very flattering for a dry or under eyes, that's more of a medium to full coverage again, but that's not quite as like glowy or necessarily hydrating for the under eyes, then the Hourglass Vanish Concealer is really, really great. Now, even though I don't really consider this to be a hydrating concealer, it still works very, very well for a drier under eye because of the formula. This is a very creamy concealer, but it has a very thin texture to it. But when a creamy concealer is also really thick, that's when things can get a little bit self and you'll start to notice a lot of creasing and heaviness underneath the eyes. So because this is creamy, but it still has a very lightweight and thin texture to it, I find that this almost like smooths over the under eyes in a very, very flattering way. So that is it for concealers. Last but not least, let's touch on powder otherwise known as the devil for dry skin. If you have dry skin, you can probably understand the, the idea that powder is one of the scariest things to apply to your skin during a makeup application because if a powder just isn't formulated right for a drier skin type, it can make your skin look so heavy and cakey and extra, extra, extra dry. Powder though is obviously really necessary and sometimes you can't avoid it, especially for the under eyes. I pretty much always have to set my under eyes with even just a little bit of powder because I find that when I don't, my concealer will just crease and it will look like a crazy mess. And then when it comes to the rest of my face, I do like to set sometimes very, very lightly, especially when I am doing more of a full glam look. So I'm very excited because over my years of testing so many horrible powders, I have come across one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven powders that are beautiful for dry skin and just work perfectly. So let's get into it. So I have two powders here that I feel like are kind of complete dupes for one another. So I wanted to mention them in the same breath. We have the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Press Powder, which looks like this. And then we have the MAC Next to Nothing Powder, which looks like this. I do also wanna note that the MAC Mineralized Skin Finish is another great, great MAC powder that is very, very similar to the Wet n Wild one. But ever since the Next to Nothing powder came out, I do actually prefer this over the MAC Mineralized Skin Finish. So I really love these powders for both my face and my under eyes. So what makes both of these formulas so great are two things. First of all, they're both very, very sheer. So when you apply them to your skin, it's kind of like you're not really applying anything, like you don't actually see the powder on your skin, but yet it will still set down your makeup. And then secondly, both of these powders do have a very, very subtle, like barely even noticeable sheen to it, but it's enough that it's still going to give life to your skin. Because something that I don't like about powder as somebody with dry skin is that obviously it does mattify your face. And sometimes I wanna keep, keep the nice glow that I have going on. And so powders like these are perfect because it will still mattify like most of the glow, but it will also keep some so that your skin does look alive and well. So those are both wonderful. Another very similar one is the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Skin Perfecting Micro Powder. Now this is similar, but I will say that this has slightly more, I don't even wanna say coverage to it, but there's definitely more like pigment to this powder. Like these are really next to nothing powders. This one I would say is like one step up. 
I absolutely love this, especially to set my under eyes because I find that it doesn't add any heaviness to the under eyes, but it still does a really good job of one, brightening up my under eyes because I do use quite a light shade. And I also really like the fact that it smooths and kind of airbrushes my skin at the same time. So I mainly use this for underneath my eyes, although I do really like this for around my face as well if I do feel like I need to set the rest of my face, but for an under eye powder, this is probably one of my all time favorites. I've mentioned it so many times on my channel, so I'll stop it there so I'm not too repetitive. So next I have another powder that's actually specifically meant for the under eyes, but I do tend to use this on the rest of my face as well. This is the Pat McGrath Lab Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Blurring Under Eye Powder, and I like to use the shade Medium. So this powder is very smooth and buttery in texture, but it's also quite a lightweight powder as well, which is why I find it does work quite well for underneath the eyes because it does not look heavy, but similar to the Charlotte Tilbury powder, this does do a really good job of kind of blurring the under eye and just making your under eyes look really nice and perfected. And when I do use this powder underneath my eyes, I do tend to also dust it on the rest of my face and I find it works really well in also blurring like my pores and just making my skin look really nice and smooth, but without it looking heavy, which is always what you want. So this is a beautiful, beautiful under eye powder. So the last few powders that I have here are all loose powders. So starting off first with the by Terry Hyaluronic Hydra Powder. I don't think I've really spoken too much about this product very much on my channel, but this is actually the powder that I like to keep in my everyday vanity and I use it both underneath my eyes and on my face again when I feel like I need to. So this is a hyaluronic powder. So this is actually supposed to be a hydrating powder, which is really cool. The texture of this powder is so fine. Like when you put it into the skin, it just melts into the skin completely because it is that really, really, really fine powder. As soon as I blend it into my skin, it it's like it just blurs everything instantly. And because this is supposed to be like a hydrating powder, I just find it works really well for my skin and doesn't like make my skin look extra dry or anything. So this is really, really great. I also do really like the Becca Hydra Mist Set and Refresh Powder. Now this is a powder that I do prefer for around the face rather than underneath my eyes. I do use it underneath my eyes every once in a while, but it's not my absolute favorite. On the face though, it's a really interesting powder. So this is a powder that is actually quite refreshing. It's super strange, but when you put it on your skin, it almost has this like wet sensation to it. So when you put it on, it almost feels slightly hydrating. It's the weirdest thing and it's very difficult to explain, but it almost sets down to like a slightly creamier finish. It's very difficult to put into words. This is something that you kind of have to experience to, to fully grasp what I'm trying to say. But because of the finish of this powder and the way that it like sets down on the skin, I just find it to be very flattering. So really do like that as well. So lastly, I actually have two hourglass powders that I want to talk about. I was originally just gonna talk about the um, Veil Loose Setting Powder, but then I was like, Jamie, but the pressed powders from Hourglass are just equally as good and I can't not mention them. I feel like there's just not much more that I can say about a powder, but um, the Hourglass Veil is a great all around powder. This works really great for underneath the eyes, for on the face. If you are somebody who really likes to bake, this is a great baking powder that will give you that baking effect without it being super, super heavy. This is another just very, very finely milled powder. So when you put it on your face, it kind of just disappears. And I think it just works really, really well all around. So besides the loose one, the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powders are so worth mentioning. So they do have a couple different finishes and shades of this powder, but they all kind of do like a similar thing to the skin. So they are all very, very finely milled. This is not a heavy powder in the slightest. It is so, so finely milled, so it does not settle anywhere on the face. So it's really great for mature skin. It's really great for very, very dry skin. And what's also so nice about these powders is that they all have a little bit of a sheen to them. Somewhat similar to the MAC and the Wet n Wild powders, but I do find that the sheen in the Hourglass powders is a little bit more present than in these guys. So again, these are great if you don't want to completely mattify and you want to keep a glow going. These are really, really beautiful. All right, guys, that is it. We spoke about a lot of products today. I really hope that you enjoyed this and that you found it helpful. Um, let me know all of your thoughts down below. Let me know some of your favorite dry skinned base products. Give this video a big thumbs up and of course, subscribe if you're not subscribed already. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.